All right, so we are live now. Hi, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Global Citizens. My name is Calvin. I am the host and I'm the owner of this channel. My guest today is Miss Avani Parekh. Uh, Avani used to run a startup called Love Doctor, which is actually a digital counseling. And she, before it was acquired by Shiro's, right? If I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And now she is actually working for this very, very amazing social media site that <laughs> actually is hosting us and that is Facebook. So Avani, welcome to my welcome to the show and maybe you want to share a bit a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, thanks Calvin. Um, so it's been about a, a year and a half that I've been based in Singapore, but um, before that I was in India. Um, and like Calvin said, I had um, what brought me to India was to start this digital counseling service called Love Doctor. And it was um, a service that was aimed at young people in India and beyond to help them get accessible and confidential information about sex and relationships that are super, super taboo subjects, especially in India. And, oh, wow. <laughs> and probably other places too. I don't think a lot of us uh, have people yeah. to talk to you about that kind of stuff. Um, and, uh, and after that, uh, I started that and ran that for about two and a half years. And as I was seeking funding and, um, like looking at accelerator programs and stuff like that, uh, I got an opportunity to meet with an angel investor who, um, had also funded this platform called Shiro's, which was a platform wow. for women. And uh, the founder and I knew each other. We sat down and sort of the rest is history and did that for two years, built their communities and then serendipitously ended up in a meeting um, with Facebook, the esteemed <laughs> platform that is hosting us right now. And that is how I ended up getting this job with the community partnerships team who brought me to Singapore. That's, wow, that's really, really amazing. So you are, yeah. so you are, okay. So maybe you would like to clarify is that you are from India, right? Originally, but maybe uh, you are a TCK. It, it kind of, yeah. So I'm a TCK because I'm actually uh, Indian origin, but I grew up in the United States. So oh. born and raised in the U.S. My parents had immigrated to the U.S. in the 70s, and then I was born there. Um, and then lived in places like India, Kenya, Singapore, and so have just picked up little bits of all of those places. Um, but if you can hear my accent, you can hear that I sound American. So people are no worries, no worries. They see my face and then they hear my voice and they're like, "Where are you from?" Um, so it's a good conversation. That's always a funny conversation to have. Uh, yeah, here's the thing. Uh, being an Indonesian, I actually shared a bit of that American accent. The reason being is that in Indonesia. Like I think in my childhood in the early nineties or so, our main influence of English is the American movies, the typical Sylvester Stallone, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, the eighties action heroes, and my dad was a big fan of those. So that's my influence of English growing up. So uh, the best way of me to speak to be much more comfortable when I'm speaking in English is to imitate the way they speak, oh, and wow. because. Ever since I was a kid, I actually accompanied my dad for a lot of business meetings. So as a result, that's the best way for me to actually. So it's like when I speak, <laughs> I practically just interpret what my dad used to say in English. So oh, wow. it works. Eh? I guess it works. <laughs> since it were, at I least mean, I'm sure people uh, people thought that you were like really, really hardcore because you were always imitating Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here's the set. The thing is, is that not only being a TCK myself, you know, because in Singapore, where I grew up for 15 years, we tend to, the environment tend to be a lot more conservative. So right. when you, as what you said, the way I speak, and well, I'm not really a big, big guy or something, but the thing is, is that I'm quite bigger than the average Asian, I guess, in terms of size. So you combine all of that, you feel like a TCK, you... You feel you are completely out of everything. So totally. it was really tough to a certain extent growing up. I think that is something that a lot of TCKs actually share. Yeah. Yes, okay. for sure. I can relate so, to that one hundred percent. All right. So okay. So for those who just tune into this channel for the first time, okay. So Global Citizens is a channel that I created in order to host TCKs like myself and Avani. And along with that is we have global digital nomads. And of course, we also will host expats. 
The reason being is that when you visited a new country, you would always have a positive impact of the place. I mean, you are there for a holiday, right? However, when you there are times that you feel that maybe you want to migrate to the country, you want to live in the country, but that might not be so completely an easy trans- transition since people have their own ethics, cultures, and experiences. And well, you need to know how to work within that system. You can't just force in your system. So this is actually the main purpose of this channel so that you understand what it's like to see at the other side of the coin. So for Avani's case, uh, okay, Avani, you are actually doing something that is considered the biggest revolutionary in 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 the world of, in the world of startups and entrepreneurship, and that is women in tech industry. Yeah? Mm. So mm. maybe you can give a summary: is what was the biggest challenge when you were entering the market, and what do you see in the potential, especially in Asia, of women entering tech industry? Oh, yeah. I think that, I mean, first of all, I do want to say that I think that there's like an enormous potential for women um, to enter the tech space in any way, shape or form. Right. Um, I come from the communities, like community building side, like building digital communities um, uh, side of things. But I feel like uh, the challenges associated. So for me, like I can talk in two ways. One is a TCK. I yep. definitely felt like um, when you're when you're operating in markets like India or Southeast Asia, um, or uh, you know maybe not like places like Japan or Korea, but definitely like India, Southeast Asia, you there's an element of control that you have to give up um, over your startup because right. there are certain things that are uh, always going to remain out of your control, um, and that would be things like uh, you know. Uh, natural disasters or wow. wars or um, when I was in India, uh, one of the things that we went through was de- this thing called demonetization. I'm not sure wow. if you heard of it, but basically the um, Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, decided that he was going to take out all the black currency in the market. And so if you had any excess cash lying around that was like the old design of the Indian currency, they were forcing you to go and deposit that in the bank and they were actually no longer valid. Um, And that's because people used large cash payments on the black market, um, especially in industries like real estate and of course for like things like bribing and even in, in election cycles. And so they were trying to do that. But um, for somebody like me, who was like a small business owner, or a startup founder, um, in, in a market like India, I relied on cash payments or even things like right. um, needed cash to take an auto rickshaw to go to a meeting with an investor. Right. Um, Correct. And as a foreigner, I didn't have access to all of the banking systems that would allow me to do online payments. Um, wow. And so it was a really interesting time to just be a founder in India because I had to figure out ways to either purchase things on credit or pay people um, uh, using like my other bank accounts, like my American bank right. account and do trans- overseas transfers, losing money in the process, right? Because you lose money on that transaction. Correct, um, correct. I, whatever cash I did have, I had to stand in line for three, four hours, uh, some, uh, sometimes all day at the bank to uh to put it to deposit it into my indian bank account um there cash was non-existent you couldn't get cash there was a shortage of cash so every time i took a trip um i would basically change a little bit of us dollars um because i happened to have like some small stockpile of dollars with me because i still came back and forth to the us because my family was there um, and so because I was a foreigner, I could do that at the airport. So whatever little cash I could get, I would just keep that. Um, Correct. and to this day, I still hoard bills. I still hoard Indian currency when I'm in India. I never want to be without cash because of that experience. But I, you know, I remember not being able to make a payment to a certain vendor that wanted cash, um, people having to sort of rearrange their systems for small payments in the startup sector because, you know, well, we're kind of used to doing things like in India, in places like India, like without receipts and stuff like that. Yeah. So it, it was a really interesting time. Simultaneously, one of the big payment platforms in India called Paytm blew up. 
So what they started doing was onboarding small merchants like your fruit seller or, you know, um, yeah, like even like auto rickshaw wallas um, or tuk-tuk drivers and basically getting them onto their system. So for some startups, it was a huge opportunity to exploit this thing that was out of our control. Yep. So I think like that was um, things like that are, were really challenging. Also, you know, the perception of women in the space in a country like India still yeah, leaves a lot to be desired. Um, oh. So, like, I've had investors, like, hit on me and I'm just all that kind of stuff were, like, par for the course. Um, yeah. uh, actually, uh, yesterday I just met um, a f- my former boss at Chiro's um, and another, you know, she's a, she's a, a female founder in the space and 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 we were just sort of reminiscing about our time uh, as founders <laughs> and talking about some of the things that she's going through. I feel like there's still, you know, there's still a long way to go. Um, but with that being said, the opportunity is there, right? These are the markets where you can test and iterate Correct. really cheaply. Um, these are the markets that have a lot of technical talent, um, especially if you're talking about South Asia on the side of India or Pakistan, um, even Bangladesh for that matter. There's enormous amounts of population. So if you're doing anything with like the urban markets, then they're right there. But I think the real opportunity is looking at like new to internet people, right? Right. So we all um, exist in markets and have worked in markets, even um, Indonesia, where people are just getting online or they're, they're, they're mobile first. And so doing anything in that space, I think is really compelling for women. Um, women are becoming consumers in these markets. Right. And so right. the, in, the internet especially has been a space for men. It's been built by men. And so for doing anything that's targeted towards women and helping them, you know, become banked, um, bringing them into the formal sector, um, getting them online in a safe way, providing them community spaces where they can learn and interact with each other is like huge, like huge, huge opportunities for growth there. Correct. Okay, first off, on behalf of men, I really apologize <laughs> if our internet is designed so we <laughs> have a lot more gender bias. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, it's okay. Yeah, I didn't mean it. Uh, okay. So, yeah, that was definitely a lot of struggle, right? To even start it, it's because you are in, you are technically in your home, but it doesn't accept you as its people in a sense yeah, when you are in totally India. Not. Totally. Yeah. Not. I'm not Indian enough to be Indian, and I'm not American enough to be American. To be American. Right? Oh no. Yeah there's, yeah. there's no. There's no place, and especially the place in the U.S. where I'm from, it's the South. Yeah. So it's it's a little bit more conservative in thinking. It's a lot more um, white supremacist, yeah. um, a lot less diverse. And so that's that's an inter- it's like an interesting uh, idea to think about not having a place in the world that fully accepts you as you are. Yeah. 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 I've been there. Been yeah, there. <laughs> the, the same struggle, we have the same fight. <laughs> uh, the thing is, is that I grew up for 15 years in Singapore, so I always regard Singapore as my home, but it's not really my home. And in fact, one of the very main motivation why I started this channel is because, well, I was struggling to actually adapt to to Indonesian's culture is because mm. I'm actually, I being in Jakarta, well, in Singapore, they always like to do things really, really quickly. And after a while, I'm actually somebody who doesn't like an extremely quick pace, but I don't like it too slow either. And that yeah. is what is happening in Jakarta. That's why. Yeah. And along with that, there are certain system that still works that might not be effective, especially if you come from a much more developed country. Like, for mm-hmm. example, in Indonesia, like micromanagement system is still in place and it's oh, still yeah. effective. So yeah. as a result, when you are somebody who lives overseas, is educated overseas, and you came back, and this is not something you are willing to accept. And in Indonesia, there's a term called ABS, asal bapak mm-hmm. senang, as long as the boss is happy. So oh, let's say when wow. you're yeah. yeah, so like when let's say you're doing work, right? If you found out that there's actually like some screw up or so, the natural thing to do is you would go up to the boss. You have to tell him, hey, there's a problem here, right? However, for them is that they will avoid whatever it is possible <laughs> to avoid any kind of confrontation, to avoid <laughs> any kind of conflict. So as a result, when you are used to, I want to settle the problem. I'm not going to adapt to you. I don't care how old you are. This is a problem. You want to fix it? You want to mm. fix it. But to them, mm. it's 
because our age, you need to respect us. I'm like, who the hell are you? <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah, that that was really actually a struggle for me when I started, and yeah. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, okay, so we mentioned earlier regarding your struggle, yeah. As one of the main factor is of course cultural differences. What, what do you ever experience like a personal failure, or as one of my previous guests actually has called it. A failure, you should be called a learning opportunity instead. So, from the cultural differences, the difference in ethics, have you ever experienced a new learning opportunity out of the their difference in the upbringings and cultures? Oh, oh. Uh, hello. Sorry. Oh, hello. Hmm. That's on. Uh, Avani, can you hear me? Yeah, I can't hear you though. Is something wrong? All right. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Now I can ah, hear. Ah, that's All what right. happened. Okay, sorry. My my microphone or uh, my headphones got slightly um, pulled out of the thing. All right, technical no difficulties. We're gonna keep going. Um, yeah, no worries. I have a I have a really specific incident um, about this. So you know, as you know, Americans have this tendency to be very um, uh, obsessed with small talk, right? Hey, how yeah. you doing? How's the weather? You know, it's yeah. no non significant conversations and um it's also a, it's also an indie like the the indian part of me not the small talk but the chattiness yep. so um like indians tend to be pretty chatty and will make conversation so it doesn't tend to be small talk but it's about having a conversation when i moved to singapore what was really challenging for me especially in a work context is that people just wanted me to be transactional in my conversation. Like, hi, I'm Avni. I, you know, this is what I do. Here's my question <laughs> for you. What do you do? Here's my question for you. And instead I was like, oh yeah, building communities. And this is what, you know, I was just chatting yeah. or making small talk. And there are a couple of times with um, people that were sort of ranked higher than me yeah. um, in my organization where they gave feedback that, yep they didn't like that oh, um okay, and so yeah. the feed the feedback actually got back to my supervisor at the time that i had trouble building relationships which i've never had trouble building relationships any, before in my life so i was like oh, oh. my god i don't <laughs> yeah. know what i'm doing like what you know oh, no. i just i i don't understand That's... the culture so i i didn't understand it for a while and eventually i i came to understand that like um when when i was approaching with my small talk people had trouble placing me right yeah. and they wanted to save face because it's all about face so now yeah. i will uh, with people that i don't know um, like the learning opportunity was to really learn that like that could make people really uncomfortable in this culture, yep. especially if you're other, you're from other parts of Asia where you, where there's even more of a yeah. a recognition of hierarchy. Um, and in the corporate setting, people come from all over. So now what I do is I let myself unfold a little bit slowly. I'm still friendly, but I'm not like oh hi hi how are you. <laughs> I don't do that anymore yeah. as much. But I do that with people that I know, and I sort of read, I try to just gauge the feeling before I automatically bring that American or Indian part of myself out. And that has, that seems to, to help. And I was also like, just able to reapproach those people yep. who had given that feedback and just like, reintroduce myself in a more formal manner. Um, but it, it, it really actually, that feedback really got me down for a little while, because I was like, what are you talking about like you know I, I in one instance i literally had had a conversation with somebody for two minutes um mm. in passing okay, in okay. a hallway in like a hallway there was no agenda there was no meeting but um she had given the feedback back to one of my colleagues that uh she couldn't figure out what our team does by talking to me yep okay. and i was like 
I was just saying hello to you hello. on the way to the bathroom. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't even a conversation, but that was the expectation from her um, that an initial meeting would be context setting and a little yeah. more formal. So learning, learn that. Um, I think the other thing that's that's been a struggle is um, whether it's fake or it's real, the perception of like instant friendship. So yep. Americans are like, oh my God, so good to meet you. Ah! Yeah. You know, we're very over enthusiastic yeah. and, and we get really excited. And the Indian part of me as well, everyone's sort of nice to you. And there is a tendency to always invite people over for a cup of tea, right? So, yeah. the, so the casual phrases would be like, um, you know, in Hindi, like, like just come by, ho- come by the house or like, okay. you know, let's hang, you know, kind of, it's kind of like how we're like, let's hang out, but you don't really have an yeah. intention of hanging out with that person. It's just yeah, something correct. that you say. So I think like learning in, in Asia in particular, that relationships unfold a little bit more slowly um and that you have to give it time and now that i've been here for like a year and a half i'm finally starting to feel like relationships with people around me are deepening and I, we have that friendship but it took this long um whereas i'm so used to like the hey what's up let's go you know that yeah. that also was really um was a big learning curve for me and quite challenging because it, it can feel really lonely um, yeah, right. especially when you're moving to a new place. So I think like, these are some of the things that I, I'm, 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 I have navigated and I'm still navigating as a TCK sort of now in Singapore. Yeah. Yeah. You, I kind of get what that means. It's though for me, it's because I'm much more used to Singapore in Singapore because, well, I grew up there mm. for 15 years mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in Indonesia. The thing is, is that here we like I recalled I had a meeting or it was supposed to be a two hours meeting, right? And in the first 20 to 40 minutes, there was not even a meeting. It's like a <laughs> catch-up session that they were talking, oh, about yesterday's event, how good was the food? I'm like, son of a gun, yeah. I need to catch a flight after this. Just quickly get it done. I want to get out of here. I want to go home. I need to oh, pack so my funny. bags and stuff. Oh, so gosh. as a result, I really don't like it. And yeah. Yeah, and I get where you're coming from because, as like I mentioned, it's like I grew up is that if there's an issue, I mean, I will highlight the issue. It's like mm. you guys just get it done, and yeah, I think I earned a little bit of heat from that, but I don't <laughs> yeah. really care. But yeah, it was really an issue when I was trying to adjust to it. Yeah, so yeah, like yeah, so when you actually first approach this kinds of issue, right? Uh, was there any kind of thing that so one of the ways that i've been taught is actually just to listen first is to Mm -hmm. prepare a blank canvas it's because uh, a lot of people who actually started with who was actually guest on my channel had actually mentioned how in the past is that because they are used to doing things a certain way then after that yeah like what you mentioned is that for you is you need to listen to the person first, then you need to bring up which side of you, the Indian part or the American part, right? Yep. Uh, was there anything that you do, though, to help you understand that better at that time? Did you Google it or did you purchase any book or video that oh. has positively impacted you for it? Or you're like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to go about this like every day of my life kind of thing. Um, I got... So for the Indonesian context, because... Um, I also have to work with our Indonesian uh, Jakarta office. Um, a colleague in that office gave me a great book about oh. Indonesia. Um, I must, I probably have it on my shelf somewhere and I can go look for it. Um, but that was like really interesting just to um, go a little bit deeper into that specific context. Okay. With regards to the Singapore stuff, um, uh, the thing that really helped me was talking to people. So like our office had a mentorship program. And so I ended up signing up for a mentor and, um, she really helped me sort of like navigate this uh, and like put it into context that like, that's just how, you know, one is that that's just how some people are, but it is slightly more hierarchical. And interestingly enough, she, uh, she in her role does a lot of work with Japan. So she has even more of that sort of 
um hierarchy and like context yeah, yeah. setting and listening uh, that she had to do so she sort of guided me through that but i did i spoke to a lot of people for that context and then moving forward i also after i understood i also gave feedback back to my supervisor and i said listen this is a cultural misunderstanding that's happening. It's actually not that I don't have this Correct. ability, but it, it, this is the way this particular office works. And so, um, you know, I just wanted to sort of let you know that I've been thinking about this and like really trying to work around it and figure out what's my part in it, right? And Correct. Yeah. Um, I think the listening part was a really big thing is just like maybe not bringing your full personality out right in the beginning because people are used to that thing yeah. um, unfolding um, all of a sudden. And it's, it, you know, it's always easy, like they say, it's better to be overdressed at a party than underdressed. <laughs> um, so in these types of situations, starting a little bit more, um, to me, it feels cold, but it's not cold, like just slightly more formal. Um, can, it always works, especially if it's somebody that's unknown, that's like, um, you know, like a higher up. But people at my level, I found to be incredible. And I think the one beautiful thing about Singapore in particular is people come from all over. Right. right? So there's yeah. those of us that come from like warmer cultures like Indonesia, India um, and, and the like. And there's those of us that come from sort of these like very respectful, very formal cultures like Japan and Korea. And yep. Singapore is meeting somewhere in the middle. And yep. now yep. I'm really starting to understand the nuances of, uh, of that. And not to bring up politics, but like I'm also looking at Singapore and trying to understand Singaporeans in the context of like what's happening in Hong Kong, right? Yep. So right. in a country like Hong Kong where, okay, it's an Asian country, but because of like this British influence, right. there's this perception and i was talking to a friend about this who lives in hong kong like the like the right to protest and people feeling like they can take to the streets and they can say yep. what they what feel they opinion, yep. yeah and in singapore we do that but over a cup of coffee right we don't it's not like yeah. a protest out on the street and so no, it will the, take too long to do the paperwork it will take too long to do anywhere. the paperwork to protest it will anywhere. take too long so yeah. you might as well just you know what uh, i'll just yeah. live with it <laughs> Yeah, as long as maybe, yeah. yeah, I'll just report to the HR. Maybe I'll get something. And oh, I did get something. All right, then. Okay, if it works, yeah. all right, I'm done. Let's yeah. go. Yeah, exactly. And so I think like that's been really interesting to understand the new, even the nuances from one place to another, right? Um, and seeing like a what what everyone considers to be our sister country, like go up in flames, and well, like things are pretty relatively normal here. You know, like we're just we're just having fun, like hanging out at, at uh, on the marina, like going to, to Arab yeah. Street. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you are, of course, you're now you're pretty comfortable enough in your career. You have accomplished quite a lot of things as a woman entering the tech industry. Yeah? But when you first started, and let's say now we bring, if let's say now you are bringing it now to the future currently, mm -hmm. Let's say you want to, you can approach a managing director or CEO to use your service to, to show them that what you can do, how would you actually approach it now? It's because uh, yeah. tech industry from several years, but tech industry is mm. always evolving. And whether you're a man or a woman, of course, there's always going to be challenge there. But the thing is, is that with regards to tech, uh, it's always going to keep on evolving. And how would you approach uh, somebody who has a higher hierarchy to actually use what your service or show them what you're doing so that well they hire you and well they have to pay you yeah so uh, because I sit on I sit on the community building side of things I think right. like that's that's the magic right like when when we can build supportive communities um, especially for women or girls who are who are just thinking about their careers and um, and and when we can help them feel safe enough to make the decisions that could impact the trajectory of their careers I think like that's like the, the secret sauce um, okay. And there's a lot of there's like like a lot of wonderful people doing this. I've also um, I also really believe in things like the I don't know if you've ever been to a startup weekend or like a uh, similar. Plenty of times. <laughs> plenty of times. No. Yeah. Okay. Cool. No, yeah, the thing is, is time. that I've never been into. I've never done like blockchains or any of that or even mm -hmm. fintech. However, I kind of get the general gist of the term. It's because uh, I went to 
I think in the in the month of December 2018, I went to over 30 networking events. I don't know which ah, one is it. I don't know what amazing. they are. So, so I just come in. I just talk about it. And even if I have no idea about it, and a good buddy of mine, uh, George, who is actually running a whose startup is now at the growth up stage, I guess it's mm-hmm. called Fire Corp. Uh, he's actually he's actually in Singapore. He's actually one of my future guests also. Okay. Uh, he's actually the one doing. He's actually he actually explained to me in terms of it. So I kind of get the gist of it. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, I think like competitions, like startup weekend or like networking events and stuff. Like anytime where you're sort of like really hands on experiencing things, Correct. like even things like hackathons, are really wonderful opportunities for people to get their feet wet, especially women. Um, so in a former life, I used to facilitate a lot of startup weekends and and loved that space to experience what it's like to pitch an idea and build a team and like you do all that over a weekend and so i think like these are great ways to encourage um women into the pipeline so if i were to approach that ceo or managing director i'd say look like our responsibility is to get involved in the community building side of things and like right. and these types of types of events that foster community um it's it's really good for us to send our role models like people like you into those types of spaces that women can enter and see that you're also getting your hands dirty and becoming a mentor for them that's right. going to encourage people along that pathway um, and also, I think, like, give uh, the company exposure to the new technologies and ways of thinking that are emerging. Like, I think that, like, it's it's so beneficial right. to be in an entrepreneurial mindset, like, no matter what you're doing, as, right. you know, even if you have, like, an old school corporation, like, yeah. it, like, there's always, like, some team within that company that's thinking entrepreneurially, and, like, those skills never go out of style, right? It's a skill set right. to be agile yeah. and to think about I mean, like, way. customer service should never, will never have its any kind of differences, maybe tech or ma- mm-hmm. uh, mathematics and stuff. I'm... Mm-hmm. Um, Okay, I'm a disgrace to an Indonesian since I suck at math, but <laughs> yeah, it never changes anyway. So, yeah. There's a there's a cool organization, Calvin, in um, New Delhi that I just oh. was made aware of. It's called Udyam. So they're going into uh, uh, Delhi public schools, which, you know, public schools in India have a reputation yeah. for being really bad. And they're teaching little kids about entrepreneurship and fostering, oh. um, like, uh, experiences for them where they can test and like build and, and and do that kind of stuff at a really young age. So I think like these types of things are super transformative in our markets right. um, because the earlier you can start kids on that path, um, especially girls, right? The yeah. the the more influence you have over um, over them, you know, coming into to companies like Facebook, like fifteen years later, yeah. Um, yeah. as engineers or or whatever. So that's kind of like. Um, my take on it and I want to see more companies building that sort of community network to make that happen hmm. okay this is actually asked by my previous guest Miss Arti Mulani Arti is actually an Indian ethnic however she was born raised and grew up with a citizenship of Indonesia oh wow <laughs> so okay, cool. she's practically an Indonesian and in fact I've said to admit it but she's more Indonesian than me <laughs> okay she actually asked this as a TCK or like any of my any of the usually the criteria of my guests, yeah, how would you advise them when it comes to dating these individuals? It's because oh, we yeah. do not share the same kind of mindset. Like maybe in Indonesia, it's a common it's a common nuance that uh, women before the age of thirty they must get married. If not, mm-hmm. then everybody will view you like, oh my goodness, something is wrong with you some some notions that of sort yeah so <laughs> how would you ask that regarding that avani i like i mean dating is so complicated when you're a tck right because you yeah. bring so many influences onto the table and the things that are familiar to you the mix of things that are familiar to you yeah. um are really out of context for people that have like never left their home country um uh in in my situation i'm i'm actually divorced and i'm now seeing uh like in a relationship with somebody who's also divorced and so like it's been a really eye-opening experience coming from like that side of failure 
um, like relationship failure to learning how to navigate again as a TCK kid in love. Um, And my advice is basically like, uh, for so like it's, I I really like this idea of like home is a feeling and not a place. Yes. And like, if you can create that feeling of home within yourself, then you will feel like home to somebody else. Correct. Right. And so like, that was a big lesson for me. And like, I was always looking for that in somebody else. Like I wanted somebody else to provide me that stability. I wanted somebody else to make my heart feel full. And once I started realizing that I need to do that for myself and the way that I do that might be Correct. super weird compared to other people, but it's still my way. Then I started Correct. meeting people who I was compatible with no matter they weren't a tck themselves but more open-minded people more people who had seen and traveled the world you know maybe not tck kids but exposed um culturally um and getting really clear on what i wanted was also super important so is it more important that somebody gives me that feeling of stability or is stable themselves or is it more important that they love me and respect me well so I think like right. these are the questions to ask ourselves. And I think like my that that's my big takeaway is like figure out what home feels like to you and give that to yourself yep. every day right. so that you're not unstable and your heart is not seeking that in someone else. That's actually really good advice. And yeah, I do agree. We because a lot of us DCK is that we don't know where we belong and creating that home aspect of it, like regarding our family, our loved ones as our home is something mm-hmm. that is something that I feel has been ingrained into us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So back to with regards to your industry, yeah? what negative advice have you have ever heard and should be avoided when you entered it? And well, after years of navigating it, what have you become better at saying yes and no to when you are given a certain, when you encounter a certain problem? Ah, fantastic question. Um, so first, the first question is like, what negative advice that I was given? Yep. Like, like yep. just bad advice? Yeah, um, basically yeah, people I... trying to screw your ass in the company. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, don't be too loud. You know, I think the flip side of this, like being respectful and watching people and, and stuff is don't speak up, right? Yep. That's, the, that's the extreme version. So I also heard that. Um, I also heard some form of don't be too visible. And that was because it can, I'm going to be really honest. This is going to sound, it's going to kind of make me sound like a jerk, but um, shiny personalities in, in places where it is more normal or people feel really shy about speaking up can get a lot of attention in the same way that sometimes like in a really good English speaking person in Indonesia or India could get a lot of attention because yep. Yep. there's all these perceptions that come with it, right? Experiencing yeah. that now. Experiencing that now. Yeah. And so yeah, I feel like only... I, yeah, that was like advice that I was sort of given subtly. It was never direct, but it was sort of like, oh, you know, maybe you should just wait and see what the other person wants to say. And it was the it was like the the tail end of the advice on um, like uh, listening first. Yeah. But it was the what was behind the additional emphasis was, um, you know, I don't want you to get too much attention. Yeah. Because I'm working hard and I'm working quietly and I want people to recognize that I'm working hard and working quietly. And if you go and get all the attention, then what? it's a competitive streak. Right? What's left for me? So uh, now I'm able to discern that, but, but in the beginning I wasn't. So I think like that's, that's like really crappy advice. Like I think you should um, let yourself shine respectfully wherever you are. Um, you know, you can only be who you are. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, and I think in like in terms of Stanley, you are not born to fit in. You are born to stand up. You were born to stand, yeah. And like, who are you to diminish your light, right? Marianne Williamson says that. Like, who? Yeah. It, what? It's not your right not to shine. Like that is actually why you're put on this earth. So, I think like that's fantastic. Um, like that's fantastic uh, quote to sort of illustrate that point. And then the other question. Um, so it reminded me of what the the second part of the question was, Calvin. Oh, sorry. Uh. With regards to like after encountering such negative situation, 
what mm. have you become better at saying yes and no to? Yeah. So it's more of a yes, a yes and no within myself. Yep. If I sense that someone's trying to diminish my shine in the situation or downplay my skills or talents because of like sort of this Asian competitiveness, yeah, I become even weirder and louder. Um, <laughs> I, I, I have started settling even more into myself and that was a process. And I also then the other, the flip side of that is also just like getting to know them, like, uh, like really understanding that people can be insecure and where yeah. does that come from? It comes from like me, you know, growing up in a culture that taught you that you had to fit in and that you couldn't stand out and that it's better to conform and all of that. Right. Really, really trying to understand that. So for me saying yes and no is like, I'm saying yes to the opportunity to go deeper with that person to understand why. And I'm saying no to the choice to actually diminish my shine because they're uncomfortable. Okay, okay. Okay, Avani, uh, this is actually my last question. And I always have to ensure that I ask this to each and every single one of my guests. Sure. What three advice would you give to a young man or a young lady now who is out of college or has developed an interest in tech startups and upstart, maybe they want to start their own business. Uh, what three advice would you give them? Because the thing is in, well, as much as social media has been the biggest influence in our life now, mm -hmm. uh, there are positive things that come of it. There's also definitely cons out of it. Like when people see that entrepreneurship looks so glamorous and stuff, but the reality is that from your own experience in fact it's not it's, yeah it's, not, it's hard it's yeah. painful it's hard work yeah. it's painful and it's hard work um oh my gosh i have so so much advice but i think the first thing is get your head out of like the career counselor's office and just start talking to people and having coffees right. the best way to like um and this is something i've actually learned from um so my 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 current boyfriend also is an entrepreneur and one of the things that he always does is he meets with people and he then asks, how can I help you? How can I support yeah. you? Um, yeah. And so even if you're meeting with somebody for a job or meeting with somebody for an investment um, or you need something from them, right? We all do. We all meet people because we need something. Um, ask them first how you can be of service to them. How, and, how it can be of value to you, yeah? Yeah. I'm, I'm actually doing that. Yeah, you are. Yeah, and you're doing that by, by pro providing this platform for us to share our stories. So thank you so much for doing that as well. Um, I, I would just say, like, that's, like, the I think, like, that's the biggest service that you can offer and something that's going to help you stand out from the crowd. Um, uh, I really appreciated, um, we had a couple of positions open at, at, um, in my team recently and uh, three or four people actually contacted me on LinkedIn and said, Hey, I'd just love to talk to you about, you know, what does your team do? And this is what I do. And, and I loved the initiative of them reaching out just to talk with me about it. Right. Like, I hate it when people just say, Hey, can you refer me without even like talking, you know, without even taking yeah. time to speak to me about something. Um, but I and love a lot of them really don't even know who you are. They don't they even don't know who you are. are. They don't know who you are. And actually they're not even well suited to the position because like the other sort of secret that I've learned is that, you know, the job description rarely, rarely is what the job is, right? And right. so if you're spending time behind a computer pressing send, that's that's not the way that finding a job works. Like if if you can be effective in meeting people and talking to people, you can talk your way into a job or talk your way into a consultancy or talk your way into a co-founder position. And um, it's not as easy for some people who might be more introverted, but you can still send exploratory messages and have those one-on-one -on -one conversations. You don't have to go to those big networking meets, um, yep. which I don't always think are super useful. Um, but I definitely think this way is useful. So I'd say just like spend, you know, a couple of hours a week meeting new people in the industries that you're interested in, and it will pay yep. off in huge dividends. And the second part of that is that offer your you know, services and ask how you can help them and they'll always remember all right. you. All right, all right. 
Okay, so that's actually my last question. So, Avani, do you have anything you want to say, though? I'm yeah. I just like I love this. I think like it's it's um it's super cool to be able to connect these dots, right? One is sort of like starting up. The second is being a TCK. The third is just like this idea of um, Singapore and just how crazy funny this country could be. Um, That's crazy actually funny, an beautiful. experience that you can experience also in Bali. Um, oh yeah. Oh, just, a li- just to let you guys know, I'm actually not in my usual broadcasting space, which is in Jakarta. I'm actually in Bali now. I'm oh. with- with my dad for a business meeting so yeah this is this place is in the upgrade of really fresh air because yeah uh, it has a really singapore like feeling to it but it's still indonesia so mm. this has been a really wonderful experience to me here and yeah so uh sorry avani uh anything else you would mention sorry no, I just want to say thank you for having me. This has been like, it's just been really nice to, to, to talk. And even our previous conversations have been really wonderful. So thanks to, thanks to you for, for doing this. This is, you are doing God's work. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you so much. Oh, okay. <laughs> thanks. All right. Uh, all right. To end it off, maybe I'll do a little shout out. So, oh, it's actually a buddy of mine, Mark Pereira. Mark is actually also a TCK of sorts. Uh, so he's a Singaporean, but he's mixed race. So he's a buddy of mine. He's actually a financial advisor. So if you guys need something, you guys can look him up. And I'm not sure who is this Ahmed gentleman. Is he your contacts? Because I've never, uh, I don't recall him. I don't know. Oh, okay. Uh, shout out to you also, my friend. Thank you for liking the video. And also shout out to Facebook. Since Avani is working for Facebook and they are the one who is hosting the channel. Uh, by any chance, you can tell the tech guys to put the video at the top. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'll give them that feedback. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. And with that, uh, that's the end of Global Citizens, episode 9. So have a good day. And Avani, enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah? All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.